And we'll start this evening with Senator Elizabeth Warren. Senator, good evening to you. Thank you. It's you have here. many plans, free college, free childcare, government health care, cancellation of student debt, new taxes, new regulations, the breakup of major corporations. Mm -hmm. But this comes at a time when 71% of Americans say the economy is doing well, including 60% of Democrats. What do you say to those who worry this kind of significant change could be risky to the economy? So I think of it this way. Who is this economy really working for? It's doing great for a thinner and thinner slice at the top. It's doing great for giant drug companies. It's just not doing great for people who are trying to get a prescription filled. It's doing great for people who want to invest in private prisons, just not for the African Americans and Latinx whose families are torn apart, whose lives are destroyed, and whose communities are ruined. It's doing great for giant oil companies that want to drill everywhere, just not for the rest of us who are watching climate change bear down upon us. When you've got a government, when you've got an economy that does great for those with money and isn't doing great for everyone else, that is corruption, pure and simple. We need to call it out, we need to attack it head on, and we need to make structural change in our government, in our economy, and in our country. Senator, Senator Warren, I mentioned you. Are you picking winners and losers? So the way I understand this is there is way too much consolidation now in giant industries in this country. That hurts workers, it hurts small businesses, it hurts independent farmers, it hurts our economy overall. And it helps constrict real innovation and growth in this economy. Now look, we've had the laws out there for a long time to be able to fight back. What's been missing is courage. Courage in Washington to take on the giants. That's part of the corruption in this system. It has been far too long that the monopolies have been making the campaign contributions, have been funding the super PACs, have been out there making sure that their influence is heard and felt in every single decision that gets made in Washington. Where I want to start this is I want to return government to the people, and that means calling out the names of the monopolies and saying, I have the courage to go after them. Thank you. Uh, Senator Warren, are they coming back? Are these jobs coming back? So we've had an industrial policy in the United States for decades now, and it's basically been let giant corporations do whatever they want to do. Giant corporations have exactly one loyalty, and that is to profits. And if they can save a nickel by moving a job to Mexico or to Asia or to Canada, they're going to do it. So here's what I propose for an industrial policy. Start with a place where there's a real need. There's going to be a worldwide need for green technology, ways to clean up the air, ways to clean up the water. And we can be the ones to provide that. We need to go tenfold in our research and development on green energy going forward. And then we need to say, any corporation can come and use that research. They can make all kinds of products from it, but they have to be manufactured right here in the United States of America. And then we have to double down and sell it around the world. There's a $23 trillion market coming for green products. We should be the leaders and the owners, and we should have that 1.2 million manufacturing jobs here in America. We can do this. Senator, Senator Warren, you signed on to Bernie Sanders' Medicare for All plan. It would put essentially everybody on Medicare and then eliminate private plans that offer similar coverage. Is that the plan or path that you would pursue as president? So yes, I'm with Bernie on Medicare for All, and let me tell you why. I spent a big chunk of my life studying why families go broke. And one of the number one reasons is the cost of health care, medical bills. And that's not just for people who don't have insurance, it's for people who have insurance. Look at the business model of an insurance company. It's to bring in as many dollars as they can in premiums and to pay out as few dollars as possible for your health care. That leaves families with rising premiums, rising co-pays, and fighting with insurance companies to try to get the health care that their doctors say that they and their children need. Medicare for All solves that problem. And I understand 
There are a lot of politicians who say, oh, it's just not possible, we just can't do it, it's have a lot of political reasons for this. What they're really telling you is they just won't fight for it. Well, health care is a basic human right, and I will fight for basic human <laughs> rights. That means And that is that the insurance companies last year alone sucked $23 billion in profits out of the health care system. $23 billion. And that doesn't count the money that was paid to executives, the money that was spent lobbying Washington. We have a giant industry that wants our health care system to stay the way it is. With because it. it's not working for families, but it sure is heck working it's for Governor, them. Governor Inslee. It's time for Governor us Inslee. to make families come first. Senator Warren, first. would you put limits on uh, any limits on abortion? I would make certain that every woman has access to the full range of reproductive health care services, and that includes birth control, it includes abortion, it includes everything for a woman. And I want to add on that, it's not enough for us to expect the courts to protect us. 47 years ago, Roe versus Wade was decided, and we've all looked to the courts all that time, as state after state has undermined Roe, has put in exceptions, has come right up to the edge of taking away protection. Your time is up, Senator. We yes, now have an America where most people support Roe versus Wade. We need to make that Senator federal Yorker, law. Thank you. What do you do about the hundreds of millions of guns already out there, and does the federal government have to play a role in dealing with it? So, um, in this period of time that I've been running for president, I've had more than 100 town halls. I've taken more than 2,000 unfiltered questions. And the single hardest question I've gotten, I got one from a little boy and I got one from a little girl. And that is to say, when you're president, how are you going to keep us safe? That's our responsibility as adults. Seven children will die today from gun violence, children and teenagers. And they won't just die in mass shootings. They'll die on sidewalks, they'll die in playgrounds, they'll die in people's backyards. Gun violence is a national health emergency in this country, and we need to treat it like that. So what can we do? We can do the things that are sensible. We can do the universal background checks. We can ban the weapons of war. But we can also double down on the research and find out what really works, where it is that we can make the differences at the margins that will keep our children safe. We need to treat okay. this like the Thank virus you, that's killing our children. Uh, you didn't address, do you, do you think the federal government needs to go and figure out a way to get the guns that are so already out there? What Even I think we need to do is quickly. we need to treat it like a serious research problem, which we have not done. Okay. You know, guns in the hands of a collector who's had them for decades, who's never fired them, who takes safety right. seriously. That's very different from guns that are sold and turned over quickly. We can't treat this as an across-the-board problem. We have to treat it like a public health emergency. Senate. That means bring data to bear, okay. and it means make real change in this country, Thank you, whether Senator. it's politically popular or not. Senator Booker, you have a program. We need to fight for our children. Senator, Senator Warren, I'm, 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 I'm going to get you. I'll, I will get you 30 seconds. I promise. Let me get. Let me get this question. We're trying. I know you guys, we got other issues we're trying to get to, including a big one coming up in a minute. But Senator Warren, I want to continue on the Mitch McConnell thing because you have a lot of ambitious plans. You I have do. a plan for that. Okay. We talked about the Supreme Court. Do you have a plan to deal with Mitch McConnell if you don't beat him in the Senate, if he's still sitting there as the Senate Majority Leader? It's very plausible you be elected president with a Republican Senate. Do you have a plan to deal with Mitch McConnell? I do. We are a democracy, and the way a democracy is supposed to work is the will of the people matters. Now, we for far too long have had a Congress in Washington that has just completely dismissed what people care about across this country. 
They have made this country work much better for those who can make giant contributions, made it work better for those who hire armies of lobbyists and lawyers, and not made it work for the people. Well, here's how I see this happening. Number one, sure, I want to see us get a Democratic majority in the Senate. But short of a Democratic majority in the Senate, you better understand, the fight still goes on. It starts in the White House, and it means that everybody we energize in 2020 stays on the front lines come January 2021. We have to push from the outside, yeah. have leadership from the inside, okay. and make this Congress reflect the will I'm gonna of get the to, people. I'm going to get a. I want to go down the line here, finish up foreign policy. It's a simple question: What is our? What is the biggest threat to? What is? Who is the geopolitical threat to the United States, Senator Warren? Yeah. Climate change. Yeah, Senator Booker. It's time now for closing statements. Each candidate has 45 seconds. Senator Warren. You have 45 seconds for the final, final statement of the evening. Thank you. It's a great honor to be here. Never in a million years did I think I would stand on a stage like this. I was born and raised in Oklahoma. I have three older brothers. They all joined the military. I had a dream growing up, and my dream was to be a public school teacher. By the time I graduated from high school, my family, my family didn't have the money for a college application, much less a chance for me to go to college. But I got my chance. It was a $50 a semester commuter college. That was a little slice of government that created some opportunity for a girl. And it opened my life. I am in this fight because I believe that we can make our government, we can make our economy, we can make our country work, not just for those at the top. We can make it work for everyone, and I promise you this. I will fight for you as hard as I fight for my own family. So.